up everybody how are you doing this is bio ideo the nigerian nomad the nigerian nomad gang welcome back to the channel um for you guys that don't know me i shoot a lot of content about investment opportunities in nigeria and just general day-to-day -day lifestyle for people that like want to see what life is like in nigeria if that's your jam make sure to subscribe and check out some of my other videos so today i want to shoot a different style of video for you guys which is um somebody called me for like just a quick consultation they wanted to kind of pick my brains very quickly on like um this person is in the similar situation as i i go back and forth between us and nigeria so i run like a a little digital marketing and virtual agency in us and a few airbnb shortlets and vice versa in Nigeria, I run like a farm and also like real estate business. And I shuffle between both countries. And he was just wanting to pick my brain as somebody that has done it. Like, what are the tips that I have for him? And it, he was very like organized. He was like, share five tips. And this was more of a freestyle video. So it's not like premeditated where I took some time to wrote down notes. So I just kind of fired off like the top five tips that comes to mind for people who want to run a business in Nigeria, whether you're abroad, you want to run a business in Nigeria, or you kind of want to float between both continents like I do. Um, and that's what this video is about. So he called me on the phone and I asked him permission if I could record it. And then he said, sure, I could record it. So in this tip, I shared five tips of running businesses in general in both places. And there I shared one tip about the most important thing that you need to have in place to be in Nigeria and overseeing a business in US. Some similarities and some like a very strong distinct thing that you guys will have to find out if you watch the video. Anyways, that's what this video is about. Um, if you enjoy it, make sure to like the video, comment underneath, share whatever tips you like, and I would love to kind of hear from you guys. Anyways, enjoy. Hello? Hello, can you hear me now? Much, much better. Yes, 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 yes. All That's right. Awesome. Real quick, do you mind if I record this conversation? I want to see if we if we extract some good points that I can like post, but we won't no, reveal no, no, your no, name no. or anything. Okay. That's okay. All That's right, okay. cool. All right, go for it. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how to go to uh how to develop a network uh uh business a presence in the United States and in Nigeria and how work in both spaces that's what i'm trying to do okay because uh, i think you've managed to do that yes my, yes, that's yes my limited understanding of who you are and what you're doing right am i right yeah, um yes correct yeah i run businesses in two locations okay two mm. continents basically yeah, right? yeah pretty much and i have okay. clients worldwide too so it makes it even more interesting with the time zone changes yeah and because i think uh you are in the fitness sector right the healthcare sector right yeah i i was i was a i owned a gym for a while okay. but i sold yeah. the gym but now i okay. actually consult for other gym oh, owners wow. and fitness professionals with marketing that's and incredible. team building mm -hmm. that's incredible yep, so yep, yep. i'm trying to understand how you do both cost effectively i thought when i moved to nigeria my uh, my business just uh, in the U.S. was, uh, the, I, I have to walk away because the people who are around me were eavesdropping on my conversation with you. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> no, Nigeria, I'm, 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 I'm staying on uh, DI. Okay, I'm, okay. Uh, Oriental Hotel, so i got to be careful because the world appears. Okay, so, okay. No, I have yeah, yeah, so I'm trying to understand how the dynamics is, and I want to do it at the most cost-effective way. Okay. So what are some of the tips you can give me? I don't want to waste your time because any time is vital. Mm -hmm. What are some of the tips you can give me? What do you wish you knew now about having two homes? Because I want to buy a home in America mm -hmm. and I want to buy a, I want to finish building my home in Nigeria. And then I have clients already in America. And I mean clients, forgive me for using that word, because mm -hmm. there are churches that I minister to yep. and youth ministries that I serve as a pastor. Okay. I know you're a person of faith, too. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're a Christian, too. So I have ministries. I, my main job is to go. I'm like a Christian motivational speaker okay. for teenagers. Okay. And mainly the white Christian space, the white, non-Pentecostal, non-charismatic, non-TBN 
church space, the non-denominational white church, one hour service, kind of mellow service for high tech. I don't know whether you've been exposed to that kind of church environment before. Uh, yes, not the high tech part. I think my wife okay. is Catholic, so I okay, think it's okay. similar. Okay, so similar. Mm -hmm. Non-Pentecostal, not that Nigerian. Oh, yeah, speaking <laughs> tongues and all that yes, yes. Stuff. Okay. So that's me. And then right. when I'm in Nigeria, I'm trying to establish schools. Okay. Not profit schools, not free schools. Mm -hmm. I want to establish schools. But because real estate and um, everything is expensive in Lagos, mm -hmm. and my family has already established something outside of Lagos, I'm trying to establish something there. So what I, I need from you is give me some tips about maybe five tips for developing a ministry um, and business in Nigeria and maintaining good communication with like tips, like the good, the bad, and ugly, okay. and still maintaining one in the U.S. Okay, all right. So I'm going to talk in terms of general leadership principles, okay? Because the leadership keeps it broader. So whether you're leading a team in Nigeria or USA, whether it's a okay. church organization or a gym organization, it's just going to revolve around leadership. So, okay. uh -huh. and yeah. So the five tips that I'll give you on that. Now, number one, the tips are going to differ slightly because the okay. culture in Nigeria is slightly different from the culture in U.S. <laughs> Absolutely. And give me the bad because I've been duped in Nigeria before. Yes. So I, I want to know. Yes, to know. yes, okay. yes, yes. I think one of the mistakes that people probably make in coming to Nigeria, and the mistakes that I made a few times when I first started, is not being completely involved in the beginning. So, okay. so I would say, number one, if you're going to partake anything, you don't have to be in Nigeria full time, but in the foundational development of the business, you yes. cannot leave that up to someone else. It, okay. it cannot be delegated. Okay. <laughs> so that would be number one tip. And number two, um, definitely team development is a very, very, more, it's, it's definitely more challenging in Nigeria. But I think I try to focus on, so number one tip is like you have to be there on ground in the beginning parts of the business. Maybe after the business has, you've put in systems in place and it's gotten to a certain level of place. You cannot hire people to manage the systems with still a level of oversight regardless. But initially, it's not an option. I would not, it would not be an option. So number, number two, I try to focus more on recruiting over hiring okay. in Nigeria. Actually, almost even in U.S. too. And what I mean by that is when you hire someone, it's harder to know like their character, their personality, how trustworthy they are. That one you have to kind of build it over time. So okay. typically when I recruit, usually I've used friends to mm -hmm. do a referral or I've seen somebody's work on Instagram or I've seen them at work with someone else and I can able to almost catch them red-handed doing the right thing, <laughs> if that makes sense. So some of my clean, some of the cleaners that I do short left for, I've stayed in an Airbnb and I saw how they interacted with me and how they cleaned the place without the boss being there. And I'm very observant of that. So that type of person, I'm like, wow, this would be a, a good person to recruit. So definitely focus more on recruiting than hiring for sure um, is what I would recommend. And also it might be best to start things on a contract basis rather than a full-time employee, so you get to know the person. So that would be tip number two. And then... Thank you. Yes. This is so deep. This is so <laughs> Good. And then... I understand why you're a consultant. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you really and process this it's, very it's, it's very, okay. very important. And number three, I think it's, it's very important to have checks and balances. Um, when you're managing things in multiple countries. So, and what I mean by that is I've had to open up positions in my business, um, extra positions in Nigeria to kind of help me with checks and balances. So like for example, um, I might have like a, a farm manager that I 
that I hire to like, you know, maintain the farm, do certain things. But I don't stop there at the farm manager. I also have somebody else that's helping me cross check what he's doing to make sure that he's on track. So I have like a farm consultant and a farm manager. So the farm consultants maybe goes to my farm once every month, once every three weeks. Um, and it's not necessarily like a, a negative thing. It's actually more of like a collaboration team thing. Like he's not there to like see if you're doing bad. He's just there. Everybody's working together for the success of the organization. So, uh -huh. so that's one thing is like you have to implement checks and balances all the time. Some people have cameras. Some people have extra staff that has a different role. Anyways, and some are visible and some are invisible. <laughs> but either way, you got to have that. So that would be number three. Um, so I think we're going to five, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Actually, in my notes, you gave me seven already. Oh, oh fantastic. <laughs> number four, which is, it's a challenge for people to do in either way. So I think in Nigeria, we have a lot of trauma, especially in the corporate structure and the way that we operate. I would say number four is actually to pay people, pay the right people well. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is that if you have staff and multiple people and they're not getting paid well, sometimes they tend to take on multiple projects. I think everybody does it regardless, but mm -hmm. if, if you want, it, it's better to have much more of a dedicated staff that you're paying well, and then mm -hmm. kind of, and think of nurturing them to be with the characteristics and the qualities that you want. So, and this goes for US too. So when I ran my gym, the best trainers that I have, that I had, were the people that I groomed. So like they were former clients that I groomed to work the way that I want them to work. So typically, highly experienced people sometimes comes with their own bias mm -hmm. um, as a staff, and it's hard to just kind of correct. Now, if you want somebody highly experienced and you need somebody with a very strong technical skill set, it's mm -hmm. best to bring them in as a consultant. Okay. Um, but if you're going to have like a, like a staff hire, you want to dedicate time into helping the person grow. Okay. Yeah, because okay. in Nigeria, you know, we talk a lot about mindsets. People think uh, it's not that people are not, they don't have good intentions or they're not mm -hmm. willing to work hard. They just mm -hmm. have the wrong mindsets that's not progressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. or they've worked very differently with other people. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of grooming them and nurturing them. So long story short, think of paying well and developing talent rather than finding someone that you feel like is good to go. So yeah. Talent, yeah. Okay. Now the last one, because we can talk about this for hours. The last one is cash flow. Without cash flow, any organization you run is gonna die. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say as you're implementing whatever you're doing, and this one sounds like common sense, that most people would be no. like, of course we no, want no, to no, make no. money. But honestly, no, 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 sure. it's not. Um, when you're in the business, money goes out so quickly. So you now mm -hmm. have to think of ways to where you can still bring in cash flow on a regular as you're focusing on a long-term goal. Like, like right. I'll give you like a perfect example. So let's just say you're trying to establish a school. The mm -hmm. school might take, I don't know, maybe a year to establish. You have to build the buildings. You have to recruit teachers. You have to do all types mm -hmm. of stuff. In the mm -hmm. meantime, maybe you can start like a, like a, a monthly course mm -hmm. on teaching somebody one specific skill set. Mm -hmm. So now the school is making money. Maybe like you have a one month course to learn how to, I'm just gonna find something easy. Maybe learn how to start a plantain chips business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now in that one month, this person learns where to buy plantains from. They learn mm -hmm. the right type of oil to mm -hmm. fry plantain. They learn how to fry it. They mm -hmm. learn how to package it. And mm -hmm. they learn how to get it to the marketplace. So, mm -hmm. so in that one month, you're giving them value. They're going to mm -hmm. come. But you're also making, you're training people every month and you're making monthly recurring income as mm -hmm. you're building the long-term vision of your school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just always think of ways to drive in 
cash flow in the long term because money have mm. a way of just flying out. Yeah, that's true. Thank <laughs> so, yeah. you so much. You're very welcome. So we have a meeting, so 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, what about the U.S.? What have you learned about managing a virtual business virtually? Yes. You know, it's funny. One thing that I have learned, although a lot of people kind of pick on Nigerians a lot, the one thing that I have learned that's actually would surprise a lot of people, mm-hmm. I am of the opinion that people are almost the same everywhere. <laughs> Well, for those of us who, I think those of us who have lived yeah. across the world uh-huh. and have lived in multiple cultures, right? Yep. I tell people, people tell me all the time, I worked in a Korean church. Uh-huh. I worked in a Korean American church. Yep. I worked in a church on the south side of Chicago. Mm-hmm. I've worked in suburban Wisconsin. I've worked in rural Seattle. Nice. And people ask me, Pastor James, who is more honest? And what I tell them is, <laughs> People are the same everywhere. Yep. And, and people always ask me a question, listen. And I said, it's just people are people. You're right. Yep. I agree with you. Yep. So I think I've learned that the hard way, that in U.S., yeah. I almost have to keep, not as intense as Nigeria, but in U.S., I'm learning that the same challenges occur. So you have to yeah. have some structure in place. So I think in U.S., you mainly just need structure that people can follow. So okay. I, I focus a lot on building systems. And in Nigeria, yeah. it requires you to be a little bit more hands-on. But I think in U.S., once you create the structure, mm-hmm. people typically can follow the structure. But if yeah. there's no structure yeah. in place mm-hmm. and you delegate to them, you'll come across mm-hmm. the same issues that you would face in Nigeria. Now, okay. why, why it's better over there is you can put structure in place in Nigeria and people still might not follow it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But in, but in U.S., our mental conditioning, we are very, we have been primed since we were a kid to, yeah. to follow rules, to follow structure, to, and, uh, you know, Nigeria is a bit more fluid. So, you know, n- people still bribe police here. They, yeah. they, so the, the mindset is different. So I'll say if in U.S., you just need to focus on structure. That's the biggest okay. thing. Once you have structure, I think you'll be fine. So, like, an example is for our Airbnb. We have a checklist. Like, when, when you come to clean, here is checklist number one. You have to do this. You have to wipe this. You have to rug this. You have to wipe this. And then after they finish that, they have to now shoot the video or a picture and send it to me. Okay. So that's like a structure, and they follow that structure. Okay, please. Uh, Send me your banking information, so please. Okay, all right. I'll do that as well. Talk to you soon. I'll look forward to it. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, So, yeah, so one of uh, somebody called me for just like a quick consultation call. So I just kind of wanted to, I was like, you know what? I was like, let's actually record this call. Hopefully the audio is good. But I was like, let's record this call, and I'll share it with you guys to see if you guys get good nuggets out of it. We were not able to dive into like the structure of like managing staff in the US, but I talked, and this was like freestyle. So I I didn't have time to like really think things through properly. Um, But even in the freestyle, he felt like he got some good content out of it and I shared five tips. So for you guys that run businesses in Nigeria, I want you guys to share your own tips on what are the challenges of running a business in Nigeria and how have you overcame them. Um, and which one of the tips do you feel like resonates the most with you? Comments below. And lastly, remember, it's your time to rise and let your light shine. Peace.